Hello, it's Marie Louise here, the Danish painter, and welcome to this video on loose expressive snowdrops in acrylics. Spring is a lovely time of year, and I thought we'd celebrate the change from winter to spring with a step by step video of snowdrops. I started by taping off my watercolor paper, and uh, if you want to see all the details on the materials I use, please check the description below this video. The first layer of this painting is going to be a light warm grey color that I will use to kind of lay out the background of the painting, the trees that we see in the background. I started out as a watercolor painter uh, over 30 years ago and transitioned into oils and then into acrylics. So I started out a watercolor painter and I um, I think you will see a lot of the techniques I use in today's uh, video are kind of based on the um, techniques that we might use in uh, watercolor paintings. Namely the use of layering and washes of color as well as uh, the way that I thin the acrylics paint a lot and use them very thinly, almost like you would uh, watercolors. At this point I also want to add some, a bit of sky color, so some kind of light blue in the background among the trees. And uh, notice I'm using a very large brush here, so you don't want to get too detailed here. It's all about painting loose and uh, using a large brush will prevent us from uh, getting too detailed, especially here in the beginning. I'll use the same blue color in this area down here, which is actually uh, my lawn, which is covered in snow and the shadows are all kind of blue. So I'll use a uh, blue base layer for this and then go back in with some highlights later. While the background is drying I want to work a bit on the foreground and I chose a fairly large brush here as well, a size 12. And uh, I want to build up some dark colors in the foreground so that I can paint some snowdrops on top because uh, we do need some dark colors to be able to see the snowdrops once we paint them. If we paint white snowdrops on top of a white background, they won't show up. So be brave and put in some of those very dark colors in the background. For the next step, let's try and use a watercolor pencil. I want to get the very dark silhouette like feeling of the trees down as a strong contrast. You can see the tree trunks are almost black so I'll start by uh, just drawing in the big shapes. Try and use your whole arm as you are moving your hand across the paper. This will create a, a looser uh, paint or uh, um, stroke of your hand and uh, you can also try and think of the shape in your mind before you actually draw it onto the paper. Don't try and copy the reference photo exactly but uh, try and get the, the feel. I can see here some uh, of the tree trunks are kind of lumped together and closer and on the left hand side we have some kind of curving uh, towards the upper left hand side. So just the big shapes and uh, then we'll go in with some uh, water. I'm using a uh, clean pencil or excuse me a clean, clean brush uh, with a bit of water on it here. The um, water soluble pencil will dissolve a bit as I'm moving across the paper. Yeah. 
you can control how much water is on your brush by squeezing it dry in between applications using a piece of kitchen towel. Now for the area up here we see the sun shining through the trees and this is something that really appealed to me when I took the photo. So um, since this is water soluble uh, pencils I can just wet the area and lift off the black pencil marks. I don't want to remove it completely but I want to lighten the area a bit. Moving on to the snow covered lawn here I'm just going to extend the area a little bit and make it a bit larger. Uh, it's time to work a bit more on the foreground area and I want to add a few more layers of dark colors down here. Uh, try to vary the colors a bit. I'm using some burnt sienna um, as well as some black. It's also uh, time to add a little bit of green. Notice how I'm not actually drawing the stems of the flowers. Instead, I'm using the green colors in different areas of the foreground, trying to vary the shapes and the size of my brush strokes. A problem we sometimes have as painters is that we don't go far enough in our paintings. And in this case, we want to make the foreground dark enough. We want to make it really, really dark. And um, even looking at the reference photo, we can see that the foreground is very dark. So go ahead and be brave and really get those dark colors in. You can make some really dark green dark brown and dark gray colors and it will look great here in the foreground, especially once we get the flowers in. When changing the colors and especially the value contrast in one area of the paintings, we often need to adjust in another area. So I'm just going to put some more blue in this area and some more blue in the sky. I also want to add a little bit more of a uh, darker warm gray here to create a bit of depth. The snowy lawn will need a bit of highlights from the sun. So I like to use a little bit of burnt sienna and mix it up really well with titanium white. This will create a very light and slightly warm uh, white color that works excellent uh, as a highlight on snow. The part where the branches are have dried so I want to continue to add some highlights up here. Notice I'm using a large brush once again and we're going to add some very light color up here. Notice I'm not uh, painting a round sun. I'm more uh, kind of uh, making a uh, oval shape and kind of um, making it softer out towards the edges. Um, it's difficult to paint translucent and kind of see through uh, things, so um, we'll do this in several stages. I've switched to a smaller size brush and loaded it really well with some titanium white. Try and build your flowers up in three strokes. I know it's hard but try not to fiddle. Do one stroke, another stroke and the third one and then leave it. Now 
reload your brush often to make sure you have enough white paint on there. You want to be able to make a flower in three strokes uh, and not having to go back in again and add more paint. Overlapping the flowers is also a good idea. And we want to keep in mind that the flowers that are closest to us will be larger than the ones further away. I'm adjusting the size of a few of the flowers making these ones a bit larger and a few at the back here that they won't actually be flowers they will be more like kind of dabs of white paint when we look at the color our brains will connect the dots and see them as flowers once again i'm adjusting the foreground colors and adding some even darker paint layers. As the thin layers dry they will sometimes appear lighter so we have to reapply uh, some more color. You can vary the color a bit by dabbing with some paper towel and scratching into it a bit with a painting knife. to create some life in the foreground amongst all the dark colors we created we want to add some dabs of lighter colors i chose a kind of yellowish olive green and i'm going to add just tiny spots of color here and there to indicate some uh, some greenery that is hit by the rays of the sun Now I'm going back in with a few more highlights on the snow and we'll add a bit more to the sun up here as well. Using the same color I'm just going to make a few highlights on some of the flowers The contrast of the tree trunks against the background is pretty stark, so I'm just going to soften a bit and using some brown acrylics in certain areas. Don't cover everything, use it in certain parts. Remember, um, resist the urge to add more detail. I know it's hard, but try as best you can. A loosely painted painting leaves more room for interpretation for the viewer. And if you're looking for more ways to loosen up your painting style, I want to give you something. Uh, I want to give you my free guide called Five Proven Ways to Loosen Up Your Painting Style. I'll leave a link below the video for the free guide. And we already covered one of the topics that I uh, write about in the guide which is using larger brushes if you want to paint loose and stay loose but the guide has tons more um, great tips and uh, also some uh, professional tips uh, that i use every day so uh, visit the link below and get your free guide today Let's try and see what happens if we add some expressive marks and abstract details using pastels. Or actually here I'm using water-soluble wax crayons, but you can just as easily use pastels. So use whatever you have on hand. And if you want to know specifically what I use, you can see the 
description below the video. But I really like to add these sort of uh, details because they give the paintings uh, a little bit of my personality, you could say. So, and we can have fun with these. Remember, we can actually remove them if we make some marks we don't like. So, uh, go ahead and uh, express a bit of your uh, free spirit by adding some uh, expressive marks. Let's get a bit more of that sunshine going. I will lighten the area again and just soften the edges with my finger, kind of making it a soft transition. And then using a, some very thick, very pure white, titanium white, I'm just going to add a thick couple of dabs of paint and a few more details with the pastels and a few spots of warm sunshine here in front. Remember that color we mixed a little bit of burnt sienna with titanium white just to warm up that white a little bit. Time to take a look at the painting without the masking tape. I always love this part, but then sometimes we get into trouble and the masking tape is ripping the paper, such as what is happening right here. So what do you do about that? Get out your hair dryer and dry the paint or actually warm up the tape and then you should be able to peel it back more easily and without the paper ripping. This trick works really great and I'm going to preempt the problem and just heat the tape on this side as well. If you enjoyed this video on snowdrops, stay tuned for my new online course on painting expressive flowers in acrylics. The course will open in May 2022, so go to my website danishpainter.com to see more details and sign up to get notified for when the course opens. As always, thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video.